Good morning, everybody, and thank you for joining the Maryland Apex Accelerator webinar. Glad you could join us today. I'm your host, Yasmin Razak, and I'm the Marketing and Training Coordinator here. Today, the webinar topic will be how to do business with GSA, or General Services Administration. And it is led by Claudia Hadley and Helena Koch, and they are both small business specialists in the Ostibu at GSA. We will get started very shortly, and there will be opportunities for you to ask the presenters your questions by typing them in the chat box on your screen. We will pause at the end of the presentation to do Q&A. As always, a copy of the slides will be emailed to you after the presentation. And I do have to let you know that this webinar is being recorded and will be available on the Maryland Apex Accelerator website and YouTube channel. For those of you who are not familiar with the Maryland Apex Accelerator, it's our mission to help Maryland businesses compete in federal, state, and local government procurement processes. Our services are no cost to you. So if you would like to speak with a counselor, please complete our client application form on our website. Okay, good morning, Claudia and Helena. How are you this morning? Good, thank you. I'm doing well, thank you. Wonderful. Okay, well, the floor is yours. So thank you so much, Jasmine. And thank you and hello everyone. Helena Koch and myself will be the presenters today from GSA. Uh, my name is Claudia Hadley and I work for GSA's Office of Small and Disadvantaged Business Utilization. This is a 45 minute webinar about doing business with GSA. And the intent is to give you as much information so you can do your research and see if GSA is a good fit. If you would like more information about any of the topics covered today, please reach out to me and I can provide you with more details. We also have numerous resources partners to assist you as well. We work with the Apex Accelerators, formerly known as Procurement Technical Assistance Centers. We also work with the SBA, SCORE, SBDC, along with other federal agency partners, and also with the Women Business Resource Center. Please send me your capability statement. My contact information will be included in the last slide. Here's the information we will cover today. We will start with an agency overview, then accessing federal contracting opportunities, and at the end, with the small business resources. GSA is a federal civilian agency, and this slide gives you a snapshot about GSA. And our mission, our mission is to deliver value and savings in real estate, acquisition, technology, and other mission support services across the federal government. GSA provides workplaces by constructing, managing, preserving government buildings, leasing, and managing commercial real estate. GSA is one of the federal government's largest buyers and contracts for billions of dollars worth of products and services for other federal civilian agencies and DOD customers worldwide. Our policies promote management best practices and efficient government operations. So what does this mean to a small business? GSA serves the same customer agencies you are marketing directly to. So if you are interested in selling to the federal government, it may be worth your time to explore what GSA has to offer. And I hope this information will help shed some light on where to start. GSA is made up of two components which offer contract opportunities. We have our public building services, also known as PBS, and our federal acquisition services, also known as FAS. We'll start with PBS. GSA and PBS lead the way in green building design, construction, retrofit, sustainable operations, and maintenance. GSA is considered the government's landlord, and as you can see, PBS owns and or leases over 8,000 assets. GSA maintains an inventory of more than 370 million square feet of workspace, 
for 1.1 million federal employees and preserves more than 500 historic properties. Here is a list of the services PBS procures. And if you are looking to identify potential PBS opportunities, check out our GSA forecast, GSA subcontracting directory, SAM.gov, the GSA mass and indefinite delivery and indefinite quality IDIQ contracts. So if you offer services in construction, maintenance, building operations, leasing, or other related construction services, we recommend you start by visiting the GSA PBS website listed below. We are now going to switch over to our federal acquisition services, also known as FAS. FAS offers access to a wide variety of contract opportunities. Their contract vehicles offer billions of dollars worth of products, services, and facilities that federal agencies need to serve the public. There is always an open solicitation available for you to become an industry partner, helping GSA supply federal agencies with high quality products and services. Here's a short list of the products and services GSA procures through FAST. And there is obviously a lot more. You can find opportunities through FAST by checking our GSA forecast, GSA subcontracting directory, GSA mass, the IDIQ contracts, and the government-wide acquisition contracts called GWACs. I wanted to quickly mention one last fast service. So not only does GSA procure, but we also auction off real estate, furniture, computers, and vehicles. We have provided our GSA auctions waste website listed below. The Office of Small and Disadvantaged Business Utilization, OSDBU, was established according to the Small Business Act amended by Public Law 95-5072. Advocate with federal agencies the maximum practicable use of all the small business categories in the federal acquisition process. Ensure the inclusion of a small business as providers of goods and services, as prime contractors and subcontractors, and manage the small business utilization program for our respective organizations. Helena and I work in the office of a small and disadvantaged business utilization, and we are your small business advocate. Small businesses will always be our top priority as we continue to increase small business participation in our acquisitions, and we advocate for all of the socioeconomic categories, including small, small disadvantage, veteran owned, service disabled veteran owned, Hobson and woman owned business, there is a lot more to learn about the small business programs. We recommend you visit our website so you can get to know more about our offers. The map you see here shows the different regions. We are located in region three, which is the mid-Atlantic region. We cover all of Pennsylvania, Delaware, Virginia, Maryland, West Virginia and South New Jersey. The other states each region covers. Please feel free to reach out to your local GSA small business specialist in any region you are looking to do business with GSA. We all know there are individuals coming, committing scams and fraud, and they are targeting small businesses. Please protect yourself your family and your business by being aware of potential scams. All of the agencies listed here are providing resources on scams and fraud. The website listed below is for the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency. They are posting the latest scams daily. The next few slides will cover the minimum requirements if you want to do business with GSA or any other federal agency. You will have to visit these important websites. You must register in SAM.gov, which stands for System for Award Management. This system ties into how the federal government and potential teaming partners will find your company by completing your company profile. 
as well as how the government will pay you. GSA posts contract opportunities on Sandagov. It is the government point of entry for federal agencies to post contract opportunities. Special notices, such as events, requests for information, pre-B conference, conferences, and sources sought notices. You will also, this site is growing and has consolidated numerous other sites, which includes the Department of Labor Wage Determinations and the Contract Data Reports, moved from the Federal Procurement Data System, also known as FPDS. If you are new to Sound.gov, please check out their Learning Center for guidance or contact your local office Apex. It is important to determine your business category and also any socioeconomic status. For example, women-owned business, Hobson, 8A, or service-disabled veteran-owned business. They are contracting benefits for a small business by socioeconomic category. So it's important to identify each category you are eligible for. If you fall into any of these categories, there will be opportunities set aside, especially for each of those categories. These will allow you to pursue a specific socioeconomic set aside opportunities. It's also critical you update your sound profile with the correct makes calls. You are conducting teaming partners, searching for companies in your industry will be able to find you. There has been an upgrade on certifications about the, on the SBA. So the SBA is upgrading how our customers apply for and manage their federal contracting certifications. SBA certification upgrade will start on August 1st, 2024, today. Initial certification applications will not be accepted during the upgraded period. The upgraded system is expected to be available for new applications in early September. You will be issued a unique entity identifier, UEI number, through the sound.gov entity registration process. The UEI replaced the DUNS in April 2022. If you are already in SAM, you will notice your assigned UEI. Your DUNS will be used for historical information. Please remember to update your capability statements to include your UEI. We have listed the website here for more information. You will also need to identify your NAICS code, which stands for North American Industry Classification System. The NAICS code represents your industry and is critical in doing business with the federal government. When a federal agency is posting an opportunity, it will be specific to a NAICS code, which helps identify the size standard and identify the small business available. You can have more than one NAICS and be both large or small, depending on the NAICS code size standard. You will also need to identify your business size and the size changes depending on the product or service you offer. Please visit the website listed here. There is a lot of research to do during this stage of the process. We recommend working with your local Apex office. They will walk you through this whole process. Here is a snapshot of the dynamic small business search profile page. Please take a look at your current profile page. This site is essentially your free advertisement to the federal government and potential team partners. I mention these because we see outdated information on company profiles quite often. It could be an email or phone number that are not in service or a point of contact who is no longer with the company. This site may be your first contact with a government agency. So please update it and ensure it accurately reflects your current business. Your DSBS profile can leave unpopulated fields. Pay attention to your capabilities narrative. It may need to be polished. Make note of any specialist services or supplies you provide and technical expertise that separates you from your competitors in this section as well. Also, take a look at your keywords. This helps 
narrow the search results, which is helpful if we are looking for some additional specialty or specialist specialized skill, which is less common under a general NACE code category. Make sure you update this section with your common industry keywords and those specialist keywords that differentiate you from your competitors. Updates are done by visiting connect.sba.gov and requesting access to your DSBS information. It takes up to three days to get access to it. You can also view a video by clicking, I need more information on how to access DSBS from the homepage of connect.sba.gov. This video is extremely helpful. If you need assistance, please contact your local Apex. There's also been an update to the dynamic small business search profile. The SBA now allows you to link your capability statements to your profile, which helps you market your business to federal agencies and potential teaming partners. I have added the direct link to DSBS, as well as the link to find the instructions on logging into your DSBS profile through SBA Connect. At this time, uh, Helena will continue. Okay, thank you, uh, Claudia. That was very helpful. And um, <clears throat> it's everyone, <coughs> excuse me, a very good idea of, of how GSA touches all types of businesses, uh, no matter what, what it is that you're uh, selling on the commercial market, there is a way to reach uh, government agencies through the GSA schedules program. You may have gotten an idea already that just about everything we do, we do on the internet. There's internet sites that we're going to be sending you to um, constantly. And there are reasons why we, we ask you to go through a certain procedure, uh, getting your certifications, getting on GSA schedule, uh, utilizing the SAM.gov and all the other systems. Um, part of uh, the processes that we will be leading you through, uh, and, and I wanna explain a little bit about, um, you're going to get um, or see notices of what we call a source of sought. When the government is going out and we're looking for information for um, purchasing, we very often put source of sought notices on the SAM.gov site. And a source of sought notice is basically market research. As Claudia had mentioned before, if we have an up, if we are looking for certain types of uh, product or service and that um, is going to be purchased in, uh, in, in a certain contract offering, uh, and we have an idea that there are enough small businesses, enough small businesses of any sp sp uh, particular socioeconomic classification, such as women owned, you know, veteran owned, service disabled veteran owned, um, we can, we will send out a source of sought message. We'll ask you, uh, would you be interested in this type of um, procurement? Would you respond to this procurement if we were going out and if by, uh, for that type of uh, purchasing? Uh, by your response to the source of sought notice, we are doing our market research and we say, okay, now I know there are a certain number of, of women in businesses, a certain number of service disabled veteran owned businesses uh, are, are going through the different socioeconomic classifications. And uh, it helps us to be able to set projects aside for small businesses and for the small businesses within those socioeconomic classifications. So, when you see a source of sort notice uh, on the SAM.gov, when you get a notice, sometimes um, you know, you'll get an email. GSA is looking for sources who can um, respond to a solicitation. Um, we're asking you to please respond to that source of sort notice. Give us your information so that we can set these projects aside. Um, the purpose of the GSA schedules, the purpose of all the government agencies are to uh, get as many projects that are set aside for small businesses and all the different socioeconomic classifications of the small businesses so that we can make sure everybody has an equal opportunity to participate in government contracting. So basically that is what a source of sought notice is. That's why you would take your time out of your busy day to respond to the source of sought notice 
so that if we don't get any response to the sources thought, the likelihood is that the project's going to go full and open. So you're helping us to set projects aside for small businesses. It's a sort of an interactive kind of cooperative thing that, you know, you're going to uh, respond to government questions, respond to government notices so that we can work to, to uh, get these projects um, set aside for uh, certain types of businesses so everybody can do some, have an opportunity to work with the government. That is what a source of sort notice is. That's why we ask you to respond to the source of sort, uh, source of sort notice tips. Um, when you respond to the source of sort, if you can send a capability statement that is geared to the type of project that um, we are looking for. So if we're out there looking for uh, someone who can uh, sell uh, computer systems uh, and you sell computer furniture, that's not a good response to that source of thought. So make sure that the source of thought uh, tells us what it is and what your past performance is and that your, your response to the source of thought is going to give us information that shows us what your capabilities are for that particular uh, project. Next slide, please. <clears throat> Uh, are you there, Claudia? Oh, there you go. All right. Um, from the multiple award schedule. Okay, this is a this is a, a brief overview of the multiple award schedule. The GSA multiple award schedule. We are a contracting agency. We put contracts in place for other agencies to use. We do this through a multiple award schedule program. Also, as you might hear it referred to as the schedules program. It is a one of the premier contracting vehicles for the federal government. We establish a contract with you in advance of any requirement. You are interested in selling a project, a product to the government. You can send us, uh, respond to our multiple award schedule contract that is posted on the internet. And you're telling us information about yourself. This is what I sell on the commercial market. This is what I charge on the commercial market. This is what uh, who my customers are on the commercial market. It's all based on your commercial market offerings. Um, altogether, that becomes your proposal to sell that product to the government. You send the proposal into a contracting office for review. If we accept the proposal, we'll issue you a contract number and place you on a schedule of authorized vendors. At that point, you would have a government contract, an official government contract. You haven't made a sale. You have already established that you are a stable company that sells a quality product at a quality at a, at a reasonable price, and you have been authorized by the General Services Administration to sell to other government agencies. You can approach any government agency, military or federal, nationwide, and if they choose to buy from you, they can place a purchase order against the contract that's already been put in place. So that's basically what the General Services Administration Multiple Awards Schedule is about. These are pre-approved contracts that will get your foot in the door when you're approaching government agencies, because if you approach them and say, I sell the certain product or service, I have a GSA schedule, again, they don't have to go out for public bidding. They don't have to go out for all kinds of postings. All they're doing is placing a purchase order against a contract that's already in place. We are not a mandatory source for anyone. We are an optional source. We're a convenience that we offer to all government agencies. Once you are awarded the GSA multiple award schedule, uh, it's up to you to market yourself to the agencies, to let them know that you are available for those products and services. So what the schedule program is, it establishes a long-term government-wide contract between you and the federal government to sell the product or service. It takes a long time. It's not an easy thing. It takes a long time to get on the GSA schedule. Typical time frame is nine months, nine to 12 months of submitting your your information, having your contract approved and, be, and having your contract established. Once you get the contract, it is good for five years with three five-year options to renew. So if you're satisfied with the contract and we're satisfied with your services, 
we're going to be renewing it up until 20 years. So it's a pretty comfortable position to be in. It's worth the effort to get on the GSA schedule. As I said, we are not the only, we're not a mandatory source. We're not the only way government agencies can get their products and services. If they choose to uh, do their own purchasing, they can advertise in the SAM. And you certainly are in encouraged to review the SAM.gov website uh, on a regular basis so that you can sell directly to the agencies. But if an agency decides to go through the GSA scheduled process, they do not have to advertise in SAM and they can just place purchase orders against those vendors who already have a contract. So there is a whole world of contracting going on outside of the SAM.gov. And that's part of the reason why you would want to get on the G on the GSA schedule. Um, requires get federal and in some cases local buyers um, access to millions of dollars and for commercial products and services. Uh, this pricing is already established. Everything's already established. It makes it it's an easy way for them to purchase. Uh, if a agency decides. I need to buy, I need a, to buy a certain type of product or service. And gee, I'd like to buy it from a small business. And I'm located in the Philadelphia area. I'd like to buy some, uh, from a small business in Philadelphia. And gee, I haven't done any um, purchasing with, say, service disabled veteran. They can go onto a website and they can narrow down their sources so that they can easily find a vendor in a certain geographical area who is in a certain uh, classification, socioeconomic classification, small business, and they can make sure that the dollars are going to the vendors who are best able to supply the products and services they need. Um, it's, as I said, we're not the only um, way to do business. About 21% of overall federal contracting uh, goes through the GSA schedule. So there are two different avenues. Uh, through the open market or through the GSA schedule. And you can find out all about the GSA schedule at this website, at the MAS roadmap. It's going to take you through the process and explain what every step is so that you know exactly what it is we expect of you and you know how what, what the benefits are that you're going to get from going through this process. Next slide, please. Okay, um, let's see, multiple award schedules. Uh, it is a contract. Getting on is a contract and we will hold you to the contract. So once you submit your pricing, once you submit your all your products and services, even though you can, of course, always um, get, um, you know, alter it or you can get uh, different um, terms and conditions issued, uh, but it is a contract and you have to, once you enter into that contract, you're going to be, bound to the contract and um, then think from that point on you're going to be working with a contracting officer if you need to adjust your contract in any way if you need to adjust your, your pricing they're going to give you the stipulations on how you can go about doing that but it is a formal government contract it's not an application to be placed on gsa uh, sometimes people get the wrong idea that they are only submitting in a an application it is you are some you are binding your company to a contract um it, it's just another way to sell your product and service to government agencies as i said government agencies have an i have a um have a decision to make they need to have a certain per they need to have a certain purchase done purchasing officer says i can go open market do the purchasing myself or i can um, buy from a GSA contract vendor. If you are there and you are a contract vendor and you've already marketed to them and they know that you're you're available, um, there's a very good likelihood that they'll go through the GSA schedule contract vendor. But again, uh, it's something that is just offered to our government agencies. It increases your visibility to uh, being on GSA schedule. We do our best to advertise all of our schedule holders to the different agencies so that they know that they can easily access the products and services they need to continue their work through a GSA schedule vendor. It is not a certification process, it is a contract. It is a very serious government contract. 
It does not give you a guarantee of sales. Uh, it, uh, as I said, it's a marketing tool. As you are, you are going to market yourself to agencies, let them know that you're available through the GSA schedule contract. Uh, it, we are not a mandatory source for them. They make the decision how to spend their own money. They can spend it open market. They can spend it through a GSA schedule holder. Um, it is not used for construction. The federal supply schedules, as Claudia had indicated in the beginning of the uh, program, we have two separate sides of the house, the public building side of the house and the federal acquisition side of the house. Federal acquisition side is for commercial products and services uh, that are sold on the commercial market. And uh, that's, you can go into a long-term contract. When it comes to uh, the public buildings service, the construction industry, anything that has to do with the actual structure of a building, those contracts are done on an individual basis. They are not covered under the federal supply schedule. So there is no federal supply schedule for construction. But just to confuse you, what we have done is put construction management into our federal supply schedule because we consider that a management service, not a construction service. So if you can, if you are um, a construction firm that also does construction management, you're going to be working with both sides of the house. You can work with the federal supply schedule contracting officers, as well as our public building service contracting officers. Um, next slide, please. Uh, these are some of the pro the, pro the um, products and services that are included in the multiple award schedule. Again, you can go into our GSA electronic library and just put in what it is you sell. You're just going to say, okay, I sell uh, sports items. I sell, I sell promotional items. Anything, typically anything that is sold on the commercial market uh, that is a product or professional service can be sold to government agencies through the GSA schedule, multiple award schedule program. Uh, we have a site which is called our GSA electronic library, which is very helpful to let you know uh, what it is that we're buying through the schedules program and uh, how you can go about selling it to the government. Next slide, please. Uh, the GSA e-library, and this is uh, what it looks like. This is just about the easiest site to use in the federal government, and it gives you the, all the information you need about the multiple award schedule. You can go, it's open to the public, you can go in there right now, you can put in the name of a product, whatever it is that you sell, you sell furniture, you sell computer systems, you sell anything, whatever it is, put it in the search bar, and the next uh, uh, slide that comes up, it's going to give you all the information on the firms that are already on uh, the GSA schedule. Uh, can you go back, Claudia, please? I wasn't quite done. Yeah, um, this this is like the most fun to use, this multiple award uh, GSA e-library. You can go on here and you can put in the name of your competitor. See if your competitor's on the GSA schedule. If they're on the competitor, if they're on the schedule, all their information is going to come up. What it is they sell to the government, what they charge, uh, how they represent themselves, uh, all the information about those those contracts are coming up. A uh, good way to use this is uh, I'm a woman-owned business in Philadelphia, and I sell furniture. I can go in here and I can find out what my competition is. Who just by putting in furniture and then going through the um, the the different filters, filtering it down, I can see. Oh well, there's already five women-owned businesses in Philadelphia who sell the exact same product I sell. Maybe that's not the best use of my time. Or I can go in here and I can say, whoa, there are no women-owned businesses in Philadelphia that sell this product or service. Maybe this is a great opportunity for me. So there's a lot of information that you can find out through the multiple award schedules program. You can find out what everybody's pricing is. Very transparent system. All the pricing is right there for everyone to see. All the terms and conditions of the contract. Everybody loves to use this site. You have to remember once you put on schedule, all your information is on here also. So it's, as I said, it's very transparent, gives you a great direction, very easy to use, open to the public, make use of the site. Next slide, please. Okay, 
if you decide that, yes, I would like to get on the multiple award schedule, I think this is a good opportunity for me. It's going to direct you to the actual solicitation package. Our roadmap is there. It's going to, it's going to take you step by step by step how to submit a proposal to be placed on the GSA schedule. You're going to go through um, the roadmap, which is you're going to be asked to take a course. We're going to ask you we're to take this, um, your your um, map, it's called the roadmap course. And uh, you're going to take it and you're just going to, just so, so that you have a good idea what it is that we're going to expect from you, what it is that you're going to be offering us and what the procedure is going to be. Once you go through the roadmap course, you're going to, it's going to lead you step by step how to fill out the solicitation package. As I said, the solicitation package is the contract. It's not an application. You are filling out a government contract. You're going to give us all the basic information about your company, or your financials, on your experience, on your past performance, all together, everything that would be included in a government contract. The multiple award schedule um, proposal package is always at least 100 pages long. It is a contract with the federal government for five years. So again, you want to make sure that you are filling it out, that you know what you're getting into, you're filling it out properly. Uh, I believe that the, the, um, the we, well, we do have a vendor support center that will work with you. I believe that the Apex Accelerators do work with you and explain the different portions uh, if you're having a problem understanding what it is that they're asking for, uh, there are people who will work with you. But again, this is the contract, the actual contract. You're going to sign it. You're going to send it in to the contracting office. We're going to sign it. Now we have a contract, two signatures. So you have to be very careful when you're filling out your proposal package. Next slide, please. Okay, this is, uh, these are for uh, basically for information technology firms. We do of course have a federal supply schedule for information technology and all the different subsets of information technology contract. But we also have what we call government-wide acquisition contracts, another contracting vehicle that we offer our customers, our government agency customers. And we these are all set up differently. Um, they are run differently than a um, schedule contract. A, a government-wide acquisition contract has a specific start date and a specific end date. You can go onto the internet and you can find out everything about these particular contracts, these GWACs. Uh, there's a lot of firms on the GWACs. Uh, and right now, I don't believe any of them are open for, bid uh, are open for taking in new people. But the firms that are on there are listed. All the firms are listed. And you can get in touch with them for subcontracting opportunities. Once these firms are awarded, like the 8A stars is only for 8A um, firms that are in the 8A program. Vets too, of course, would be for firms that are in the vets program uh, or, ve or veteran-owned businesses. So that if as a purchasing officer for the IRS, if I'm looking for a veteran-owned business, that sells a certain type of uh, IT product or service, I can go to the Vets GWAC and see all the vendors who already have contracts uh, and get in touch with them. So th again, this is another contracting vehicle. It's another opportunity for you right now to get in touch with vendors so that you can offer your services as a subcontractor. You're offering your services to a vendor who has already been awarded the contract. So they have a contract. They're they're or they're organizing multiple contracts, and if they need uh, subcontracting uh, firms that, that you know to help them complete their contract, uh, they can certainly subcontract out portions of their work. Uh, next slide, please. Um, you can go on to the forecast tool, and uh, every government agency is required by law to put uh, out a forecast. And a forecast is an idea of once Congress appropriates money, we get our budget, then everyone is, uh, we, we, we make a decision, all agencies make a decision how they're going to spend their money in the course of the fiscal year. So when we get that bundle of money, 
uh, when Congress appropriates the, the uh, budget and they say, okay, the GSA, you've got this much money and uh, you're going to decide what it is that you need. The, and as they come across the thing, uh, how we're going to spend the budget, we're reporting how we're going to spend the, the budget in the course of the year, we put that information on the forecast tool. The forecast tool is sort of a heads up for you. In the third quarter of the fiscal year, we are going to be buying furniture for a certain location. In the third, in the second quarter of the fiscal year, we're going to be buying um, computer systems for a certain location. So we're giving you a heads up on how we're going to be spending our money in the course of the fiscal year so that you can prepare. You can look through the forecast and you can just um, go through here by, by the next codes and say, oh, well, are they going to be using, are they going to be buying anything from my next code uh, or my location or my geographic location? Find out how the government is spending their money so that you can prepare for that purchase that's going to be coming down the road. Now I know in the third quarter of the fiscal year, the government is going to be buying or the GSA is going to be buying furniture for a certain location. I can make an agreement with my manufacturer, uh, my supplier, that I won't be able to get for, uh, uh, the products from them. I can get my, uh, you know, all my information together so that when that purchase hits the street, it's not the first time you're seeing it. You've already got ideas of what's going to be happening in that forecast tool. You can also, uh, it, it's going to give you all the information on uh, the purchasing officer. And you can send the purchasing officer your capability statement so that they know there is a small business that is interested in that type of work. And it gives them an idea of uh, uh, that this project can be set aside. So you should always uh, check into the forecast Make sure that you're aware of what uh, what's being added to the forecast so that you know uh, and make plans in your firm, uh, your long-term plans on how you're going to, uh, what kind of proposals you're going to be sending in and what you want to take part in and what you maybe feel that it's not worth, uh, what you're, it's not, uh, it doesn't work out for what your business is uh, in line for right now. But it's a good heads up, it's a tap on the shoulder, what's going to be coming down the pike. Every agency is required to post their forecast. General Services Administration is extremely uh, serious about their forecast. And we really do try to keep all the information up to date. Gives you the name, as I said, of the contracting officer uh, as, so that you can send them information. Uh, can I see the next slide, please? Um, this is uh, information on subcontracting. You might go through all this information and say, you know, it's kind of too formal for me right now. I'm not quite sure it's my first time getting into government contracting, or I just don't want to be dealing with all of this paperwork. But subcontracting is a good idea. You can, you can offer your products and services to a vendor who already has a government contract. Now, the government, the federal government requires all large businesses who receive a contract that's over $750,000 in value, and that's $1.5 million for construction contracts to subcontract out portions of their work to small businesses. And they do, we do go through, uh, they, before award, uh, the, the vendor must su submit a subcontracting plan to the OSDEBU office uh, and tell us, how am I going to subcontract out uh, what portions of the work are going to be subcontracted out and how I'm going to break them out to small business and all the different subsets of small business. So there's a lot of uh, opportunity with subcontracting. And so we do have a subcontracting directory. You can go into this website right here and you can just search out by next code. Search out by, if you're saying, well, gee, I know Lockheed Martin does a lot of work the kind of work that I I uh, do. You can go into their website. Uh, all their information is going to be here. Their point of contact is going to be here. And you can submit your information to them so that you can get ideas of subcontracting. 
we can work with you, as I said, to show you how to how to utilize the subcontracting directory so that you can start to get your information into the hands of the prime contractors who already have con government contracts and who have requirements to subcontract out portions of their work. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, there is a, data, a database which is called Subnet. And Subnet, uh, we are encouraging our large businesses to put their requirements and their points of contact on the subnet. You can go in there as a small business and um, by search out by NAICS code, by geographic area. However, it is that you want to reach out to these firms. This is going to give you information on firms that are seeking um, certain types of small businesses so they can subcontract to them. As I said, they all have a subcontracting plan and we do check on their subcontracting plan uh, on a yearly basis to make sure that they are keeping up and, and uh, making sure that they are spreading their subcontract opportunities to all the different subsets of small business. Next slide, please. Um, your Apex Accelerator. Your, all the information that we've just given you, your Apex Accelerator knows offhand. Uh, so they are excellent sources for you to go in and you can ask questions questions. Uh, they can give you uh, all kinds of directions, training, counseling. They can help you if you come to, if you're trying to fill out uh, information and put it into a database uh, and you're having difficulty understanding what exactly is, not, is being asked. The Apex Accelerators are, are people who can, are so well versed in government contracting. They can walk you through just about any of the websites, any of the databases, they can tell you what it is that we're expecting um, when we are speaking our government language and they you want us to break it down into something that is more easily understood. Apex accelerators are there to, to work with you. So it's always a great, uh, great idea just to keep in touch with your Apex accelerator. Always um, you know check on their websites. They give a lot of training courses. They give a lot of um, um, just... Uh, ideas on uh, city and state as well as federal government uh, contracts. So here's a free service. There is no um, counseling service. There is no uh, uh, service that you're going to be purchasing that is going to give you better information, more up-to-date information than your Apex Accelerator. Excellent source of information. Um, federal agent, okay, uh, the small business development centers are listed there. We've, give, we've given you all the information on who it is you can get in touch with. Um, you can get free mentoring through the uh, SCORE. Just we try to offer as much information as possible, free of charge. We're not going to fill the forms out for you, but we're basically, uh, there's just so many sources that you can go to your Apex Accelerator, your Small Business Administration, any OSDEBU office in any government agency will work with you free of charge. Um, as Claudia had mentioned early in, on, uh, once you start to get onto these government websites, um, Pete, you're going to be inundated from firms who want to sell you information on how they can get you on the GSA schedule for $5,000. Nobody can get you on the schedule for $5,000 how they can you know, fill out the forms for you. Uh, the Apex Accelerators, the, the GSA Vendor Support Centers, we can all do this free of charge. So never spend money for something that you can get free of charge. You can always just send us a quick email, say, uh, is this worthwhile or is this something I should, uh, I should invest in or look into? And we'll let you know honestly where it is that you can get those services uh, in a quicker manner. Next slide, please. Uh, federal agency, small business offices. Uh, he's, uh, these are some of the uh, resources uh, for the small business offices. Every agency has a small business office. And if you want to sell to a particular agency, you're just interested in finding out anything about a particular agency, you can just go into that agency, um, National Park Service dot slash Osdebu. Uh, we do have our a, a listing at this website 
of all the federal uh, business offices. So we will get you to the source that you want to be at if you just ask the question. Uh, next slide, please. Um, again, more um, for the General Services Administration, you can go to this website and you can find the um, small business officer in the region that you want to do business in. So if you're particularly interested in finding some information on something that you know is going on in Texas or California or whatever, uh, you can find the small business contact within GSA at this location. Uh, next slide. And this is, I always say, is the most important slide that we have. Uh, it is my email address and Claudia's email address. If you have any questions, if you got half of a sentence and you're not wondering what I meant by a certain thing, just send me an email. What did you mean by this? What do I do about this? What do I do next? Nothing formal, just quick email to us and we'll get back just as quickly to you uh, and just give you the, the further direction. So I hope this was um, gave you enough information uh, on how to get involved with the government, uh, especially how to get involved through Gen General Services Administration. And uh, we invite you, as I said, to get in touch with us at any time. Uh, if there are any questions, we have a little bit of time for questions and answers. I'll be glad to answer any questions. Thank you, Helena and Claudia, for a great presentation. And for demystifying GSA for us all, we get a lot of questions about you guys. So it's great for you to break it down like that and to generously offer your contact information. So yes, if there are any questions you have that weren't answered, please type them out in the chat box now. Or if you would like uh, Claudia or Helena to go over any particular slide again that you may have missed earlier on. Okay, we have one that says, can you please explain the FAST program schedule, please? The federal, um, the FAS, Federal Acquisition Service, as I said, Anything that is not construction related can be purchased probably through the multiple award schedule program under our federal acquisition service. So by going on to, and the easiest thing I can tell you to do is to go onto that website for e-library and write down what it is you want to sell. What's your product? And the next sl uh, slide that comes up is going to give you all the information on that particular product. It's, uh, it's broken down into all the different se sections on the um, uh, multiple award schedule, and it'll lead you through the process of getting on the Federal Acquisition Services multiple award schedule. FAS is considered the, the service. Under the FAS side of the house, we are uh, we have the multiple award schedule program, which are the actual contracts. I hope that helps. Thank you. Um, somebody's asked, do you have any on site training, in person training? We we do have on site training. Um, I think there's going to be there's go there is a uh, if you go into the GSA dot gov um, Osdebu, um the they will give you an option to go into the training site and uh, we of course we offer the training on a regular basis so if you just send me an email I'll tell you when the next you know training like we we give marketing training we give how to get on schedule training. Uh, how, you know, how to uh, do subcontracting training. So if you let us know what it is you need, but truthfully, if you go through the roadmap, uh, it's going to lead you step by step by step what it is you need to do and explain it to you. Uh, but if you have a question, please just send me an email. We'll send you a step one, two, three. Okay, one more question and then we'll wrap up. Um, could you kindly go over the forecast slide again? Which slide was that? 
forecast. Oh, forecast. Okay, yeah, the forecast. Okay, we put the forecast out. Every government agency is required by law to um, put out a forecast. Uh, as we are making determinations of what it is, how we're going to spend our money, we are putting that information as, as an advance notice for you. It can be two years in advance. It can be two weeks in advance. But what, when a decision, when the acquisition planning process starts, we start to put information uh, onto the forecast and the information grows. It was, you know, we start out with the basic information, then we're going to add more information as, as the planning process uh, continues. We're going to list it by NAICS code. So you can go into the forecast and you can say, are you going to be, you know, and you're just going to put in the NAICS code, your NAICS code uh, to see if we're going to be selling any or buying anything from that NAICS code. Anything that's being planned, that's in the planning stages, that's in the actual acquisition stages, anywhere in stage of the procurement is going to come up. It's going to give you the information. And as, as the procurement process proceeds, we're going to be filling in. We're going to decide, how are we gonna make this purchase? Are we gonna make it open market? Are we gonna uh, restrict it to small businesses? Are we going to uh, go through the GSA schedule? If so, what schedule are we going to go through? That information is going to start to be filled in. It's going to give you the name of the contracting officer who's in charge of that, that particular project so that you can send the contracting officer an email. I see that in third quarter of the fiscal year, you're going to be purchasing this particular product. Here's my capability statement. I'm a small business. I'm a women-owned business. I'm a whatever. Uh, just to let them know that you're interested it's also going to give you the name of your small business officer, contact information for the small business officer. So it's a way for you to follow the progress of that particular purchase. I see it's going to happen. I see it's they're starting to plan it. I see it's being advertised. I see there's a source of thought out there. You're going to be given all the information to follow the planning process so that you know when it hits the street, because everybody always says, by the time it hits the street, it's too late. You've already got all that information at, in the forecast, from the forecast. So it's something that you want to look at and you want to just sort of, uh, you know, again, uh, go through it. Once you see it, you're going to see how they're listing the information and who you can get in touch with. Wonderful, thank you. So I'd like to thank Helena and Claudia again for this very, very in-depth um, tutorial of how to work with GSA. Hope you found it helpful. They will be back again later on in the year or I believe in the new year with some more trainings for us. So we look forward to that. I will be sending out the slides and the recording shortly. And don't forget, if you need help with anything to do with procurement, please reach out to your Apex Accelerator counselor. So thanks, Helena. Thanks, Claudia. Thanks, okay. everybody. And we will see you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you all.